Let's go! We were about to talk to a guy who not only overcame being bullied, but erased any chance of ever being bullied again. With over 10,000 hours of teaching experience, he now helps others do the same. He used his experiences being bullied as fuel to become a five-time Canadian Jiu-Jitsu champion, North American fearless fighting champion, and one of the pioneers of the MMA movement in Canada. And now he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Joel Gerson. Let's go! Straight out of the t dot. That's what it is. Live from the six boroughs. Don't go nowhere. For sure. Welcome to Standing in the Six. With, with, with your host, Michael and Constantine. It's cold outside. It, it's really, really cold. And uh, I mean, this is the day that, uh, you know. Oh, by the way, I don't know if this happened to you, but for us, they canceled all the bus lines. So we're scrambling this morning. Where do our kids go? Do they go to school? You got to leave work early or you got to, you know, go to work late. It's just a lot of this inconvenience happening here. Did you figure it out or, or was the first uh, world problem stress a little too much? I actually left it up to my wife and uh, oh, great. we're going to hope that she made the right decision. The master strategist. The master strategist, okay. exactly. But it yeah. is quite the inconvenience. I think a lot of people just run to giving up too easy these days. Like, yeah, I know. Why can a bus not function in cold? It's true. Everyone needs a wife that they could just tag out to and just fly off and do a podcast exactly <laughs> there you go there you go but i mean that is just the least i mean look do we get the temperature yet official yeah it's uh minus 15 right now sorry can't we hear you it's my, why not okay now we, we can hear him, but it's not as deep usually the intern's voice is a little deeper it is oh that's way too deep <laughs> it's almost it's almost a little weird it's minus 15 right now minus 15 feeling like uh, it doesn't say, actually. It okay. just says minus 15, but then okay. that's just, you know, ackee weather. Okay. Well, look, you can go back to popping your pimples. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> look, last week, uh, I had a very bad week, Mike. A very bad, very bad week. I'm not going to go into all the details of my week, but I will go into the climax of the week. Why? What happened? I'm driving, leaving, leaving the studios, driving down uh, um, a street called... I think it's called Asimak or some weird name. That's your problem right okay, there. Okay, I don't know. Nothing good happens okay. on Asimak. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and as I'm driving down, bam, a truck reverses right into the side of my car, takes out the door, takes out the door. What? Shatters the entire back end. And uh, w- uh, this actually happened. What do you mean takes out the door? Like actually like T-bones you? Like he's, re- he's probably loading something and he reverses as I'm driving. So it went hard. And the, okay. door, the door completely got crumpled up, uh, fell off. And it just so happened right in front of the co- the police. Like literally, they're just sitting there. Their, their cars are parked, so they saw the whole thing. I get <laughs> out of the car. They're now. sitting there, like in the town, after they do that whole bank robbery and yeah. they drive the minivan across yeah, exactly. the bridge. Exactly. And then there's that there's that cop who's yeah. once they get out with their AK 47s That's and their right. gun masks and they take them off, <laughs> and they're ready with all the the, the fresh cash. That's right. That's there's right. a cop who's watching a construction site. He does this exactly. But the thing is, they were sitting there, but they didn't see it. So what do you mean? They, ex- oh, see what it, oh, see, that's exactly that's yeah, the yeah, town. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so, anyways, I get out of the car and they I, must have heard it. No, nothing. I Come actually on. approach them. I go, "Hey guys, did you see that? Uh, what? You and have they, a Honda Civic? That's like premium yeah. metal. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, plastic. Yeah. <laughs> premium fiberglass. I couldn't believe how much that car crumpled. So let me ask: Did you just take the panel and pop it back like Lego? No, you couldn't. It was all crumpled up like foil paper. Okay. <laughs> the handlebar to the passenger side door got shot like a missile in the back window and shadowed the back window. Whoa. Okay. Now, if my kids were sitting back there... Are you kidding me? It would have been bad. It would have been bad. It would have been real bad. So I get out of the car now. I go to the driver. Yo, what's going on, man? And he looks at me. He goes... Did you say yo first? I, I think I said yo. Okay. okay. It's, yeah. it's, I, I think I went almost a little street exactly. since I was on the street. Exactly. Recognize. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, he's like, man, what's wrong with you? You, you didn't see me reversing? And at that point, <laughs> at, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, at that point, I just stopped talking. It's like uh, this is gonna go nowhere. You take out your butterfly knife, yeah, no, your extendo. <laughs> no, I went right to my car. I took out the dash cam because I got a dash cam. Oh, I thought you were gonna get a, a Glock. No, no, your nine millimeter no, no. from. Uh, that's okay, not, that's not the story. Sorry. Yeah, so I took the dash cam out, and then I just uh, went up to the police. I didn't even have a conversation with them. I said, "Look, here's what happened." I mean, there was witnesses that saw what happened as well. However. I mean, it was just a bad afternoon. I mean, I got a rental car, and that's the end of the story. It's oh just that goodness. it happened, and it, it just one of those things where, you know, we just can never, ever, ever prepare yourself. Now, here's the thing. What song were you singing at the top of your lungs as you were driving when it happened? I, wasn't, I was on a conversation. I was on a phone conversation. So the person actually heard me. Hand, I can't even – I would hand, love to show you the video right now. But Hands free? 
Hands free. Hands free. Now, the funny thing is that you're mentioning hands free is Toronto, as of January 1st or 2nd, has put in these new rules now where uh, where actually the rules are the same, but the fines have gone up. If you're caught driving yeah. and texting or on the phone, I mean, the handheld, whatever, you get yeah. some major fines. There's right a now. lot of opinion on that. I've heard everything like, oh, man, it's preposterous. That's a cash grab. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you this. Um, I've been guilty, guilty in the past of using my phone while driving. No. However, no. I've stopped that completely. Is it because of for just a day? Because um, <laughs> no, no, I've stopped that completely. Because let me ask: Is yeah. it because of the the fear of that fine? Did it do its thing? With no, you? it's did not it, the fine. Did it neuter your initiative? No, you know what it is. So what happened to me is I was on, I was I was actually when that accident happened, I was on the phone, but I wasn't holding the phone. I had my ear pods in. Okay, so I was actually <laughs> sounds, completely focused. Sounds so wack. I know. I was I focused. I was focused. <laughs> Jerry, do you know what ear pods are? What? AirPods. Actually, they're called AirPods. I don't know. I'm just AirPods. Yeah, yeah, they're AirPods. Okay, you gotta explain. But uh, AirPods are made by Apple, and you just stick them in your ear without any wires. You don't know what an AirPod is, Mike? Seriously? Please, please. Okay, and you just listen to for the listeners audios, and I mean audio or uh, <laughs> audios, music or audio, just through, through your I'm AirPods. I'm still working with AM radio, so hey, I don't know. It sounds good. But... Oh, oh my goodness! My story is coming up too early. It's all good. Okay, so oh, hey, nice. What is that? How to do yoga, Pilates, <laughs> and deep stretching at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty good. It is. We'll talk about that a little yes, bit. But, but, but anyways, in, in a nutshell, it was a traumatic experience. And uh, it just kind of reinforced why it's so important, why people are not driving and texting or being distracted in general. Not that I was. I was actually very focused, and this came out of nowhere. However, I'm glad that they have actually increased the the fines, and uh, I'm hoping that it's going to put people in check. However, if people are still to this day driving intoxicated, that to me blows my mind. Let's go! It's kind of scary, uh, someone being uh, drunk getting behind the wheel. Yeah. It is pretty crazy. It is. Now, look, that's like extreme, but some of these fines... It's like everything from distracted driving. And I, I read a des- description. It said it's not just your phone. It, it it's said, anything. It said that even if it, it can mean eating a burrito. Yeah. And when I read that, guess what? <laughs> I actually, on the regular, would eat a breakfast burrito while I drove in but, the morning. Yeah. But hold and on. man, yeah. the fear of God struck my heart. I was like, it's like the article was written for me. How did they know that I eat burritos? Look, I've seen people, I've seen people drive with their knees while they're having a bowl of porridge. Okay? <laughs> no, no, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious. And you know him very well as well. You I know, know who it is? You know who it is. I, don't, I have no idea. Don't yeah. say who. I'm not going to say Tell who. Tell me after. Are yeah. you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Okay, so look. You, apparently, people are shaving while they're driving. They're Jerry, putting on lipstick. Yes. how could you? How could you? No, I don't do that. I have a sandwich when I'm on the road. Yeah. I don't, you know, I keep it simple. <laughs> but look, no you, soups, you, you know. That. So the bowl of porridge, like in the hand. Literally, and they're eating it as they're driving with their knees, okay? <laughs> look, if we're going to go on technicalities, anything that you do other than your hands being on the steering wheel is going to be a distraction, right? So if you go to open that piece of gum and put it in your mouth, you're not looking. What if right? you want a signal? If you, have to, if you want to signal, you have to look somewhere, right? There no, you go. Don't you have to take yeah, my hand exactly. off the wheel to no, signal? Exactly. So what I'm saying is like, there has to be some sort of reasonable aspect. The person eating porridge, fine. Give so them 10 d- fines. Distracted driving. Yeah, exactly. And it's steep. I think. Can they take your license right away? They can. Uh, they can now, yeah. I think it's three days. Really? And it's, points. Look, it's good, man. I mean, you know what's funny about that? On the drive-in, it was a little mad because the people on Mondays are just stupid when they drive. It's like they forget. It's almost like 24 hours of not driving because they didn't do much on Sunday. Yes. They forget Monday, the madness. I saw like about seven, eight people on their phone. Like yeah. literally just kind of like this, driving all around and like tr- on the snow, slide, slip sliding. And you sliding. know the reason why they do it? Because well, they're bad enough. at time management. <laughs> well, there's that, but there's not enough cops to sit there and uh, police it. It's true. I mean, if you so got... no matter what yet yeah, what happens, it's you know, it's like you can put all these laws out there, but unless they give the police the you know the tools to do the work, it doesn't mean anything. And there's certain traffic apps that you can actually mark where the cops are yeah. on the road, and it's you know, it's, I guess. Hey man, mm. there's always I a got system. Hit by a car whenever with, there's, whenever there's a system, there's a way to beat the system. For sure, I got yeah. hit by a woman, you know, doing her makeup in the car. I'm sitting at a red light. Next thing I know, boom, she runs into the rear end. Right. And I'm watching her come at me. I'm looking in my rear view going, oh, she's going to hit me. Are you, oh, my goodness. Yeah. So all I did was let off the brakes just so she could bump me and I could move forward a bit. So, but, yeah. Oh, man. So, look, today's a very uh, special day. 
Yes. Because uh, we're going to be... Because uh, it's today and we only have the present. And the present is a gift. That's right. Wow. That's so powerful. But today is a special day because we're going to be talking with Joel Gerson. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who don't know who Joel is... You're going to find out. I'm Absolutely. not going to go into that intro yet. Okay. But what's cool is, I mean, there's a story that I was just uh, reading up on on CNN. Cops say a would-be kidnapper chased a woman into a karate studio, okay? Okay. And it says that was a bad move. And it was because he literally was trying to assault this woman. And, uh, I mean, you'd think... I'm running into a dojo right this, now. This is, like, this is like the start of Karate Kid 5. Yeah, exactly. I'm running. I'm going to stop what I'm doing right now. But you can just quickly uh, just, you know, picture as he runs in to try to do this, he just gets completely disintegrated. Is that what happened? Yeah. He got beat up. Yeah. Okay. That's a I mean, oh, man. come on. Like what something, are the something is wrong here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you're running into Cobra Kai Studios and uh, I think that guy should take it as a sign that he should never rob another person again. <laughs> no. You well, know what I mean? Chasing a woman is already wrong, so he already has something wrong with his head. So I'm glad he got his ass ass handed it. Yeah, to no him, one has so. any sympathy yeah. for that. That's hilarious. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's so so I mean today we're gonna we're gonna dive today into that world. Okay, yeah. into the world of... Of uh, doing r- running into dojos. Dumb cr- <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there a show about dumb criminals, something like that? Yeah, I think there was. I, I think there was. was. I mean, there's a lot of stupidity I was out, going I was on. out like, building libraries and orphanages, so I, d- I don't know. That's right. I never That's watched right. television. That's right. Okay, really cool. Yeah, Joel's a really, uh, really great guest that we were, we're privileged to have on. Super cool dude, everyday guy who's accomplished extraordinary things. And that's kind of, it's always a treat. You know, our, our hope with the show is just uh, to really, you know, connect with people, see what they're doing, mm-hmm. uh, and really see what they're about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So should yeah. we bring them in? Yeah, sounds good. Let's go! Thanks for coming in, guys. I really appreciate you guys making it in with this <laughs> weather. Thanks for making the time for me today. Oh, man. Oh, Thank you so yeah. much. Well, it's Absolutely. A with, I know that all the buses were not working, so. Oh, yes. You but, guys had to Uber exit. Uh, yeah. 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 Uber X, that's the... Actually, no, with you guys, the security company, you guys probably was like big Suburbans coming in, people thinking you're like CIA and stuff. Yeah, with the big chains on the tires. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do have one. We do it. We use it prim- primarily for TIFF. And it's funny, when we're in it, people think that there's... Uh, they think the president is uh, in Toronto. But they think he's the president because you're wearing sunglasses? Or they think yeah. that you're the celebrity? How does it work? Like, who, do, who thinks, like, who gets the security and who gets who's the VIP when you guys are together? I think both both of us are the spouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who yeah. walked? Do you guys walk beside each other, or does somebody walk in front of the other? Oh, that's, these are good questions. They are. They are. Oh my goodness! Yeah, they are good. I'm questions. turning the tables here. Yeah, yeah I never, exactly. pa- never paid Actually. attention to well, that. But because 2019 is the year for us of deflection, we're going to deflect that question <laughs> <laughs> and the prescription. Are they? Yeah, yeah. I got glasses for the first time last week. Yeah. Oh, nice prescription. Yeah, for really? reading. Yeah, for the first time. Yeah. Because I'm reading on my phone too much. Nice. Yeah. I, I well, got old. As I'm looking closer, and for all the, uh, <coughs> the viewers and also the listeners, we got Joel Gerson in the house today. Mm-hmm. He runs Revolution MMA. Actually, he's the president of Revolution MMA. Mm-hmm. And he has two locations, one in Toronto and one in Vaughan. And uh, we're going to dive into that. But before we do, I'm actually kind of cold right now because today... Yeah. Is it that cold? It's bloody cold. And, and uh, I'll tell you this, the last time I remember being this cold... In 2016, I don't know if you guys remember where the All-Star game came down here. Yeah. The NBA All-Star Star weekend. Yeah. And uh, the funny thing is is that <laughs> the, the, the conception or or the misconception of the U.S. and the world is that we live in igloos. And yeah. It's really cold. That day just so happened to turn the lights off. Hey, nice. Is that better? Yeah, because I'm going to get a green hue on all of you guys. Okay. okay. That's good. fine. So Sounds good. That's fine. Just yeah. Just start. That was good shit, though. Yeah, no, it's it good. Was. It was. <laughs> we're going to still... That's just going to go through green hue on everybody, so... That's fine. You know? I think we're all secure. Yeah. We're good we're to keep going. Exactly. We're going to keep that in. I like yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, okay, That's so you're good. saying... That's good. A lesson for those. This is Make a, sure you have your yellow lights turned off. No, this makes the story a little bit more dramatic. It actually does. Okay, so it okay. was February. We were looking green because it was cold. That's right. Yeah, February 2016. February 2016. Americans, igloos. Igloos, exactly. Okay. And... Uh, um, the, the the thing is that they actually the the weekend of the All Star weekend it was a Saturday night the the big game we actually had record breaking never seen before temperatures I think it was like almost minus forty that day mm-hmm. so we hit 
every single you know stereotype that you know we do have that temperature and the funny thing is that uh, both myself and mike were working an event um uh, lebron uh and uh, many of uh, the and friends uh, and friends that came down uh they uh had an exclusive party at you know a very nice uh, residence at, at an exclusive residence at an exclusive residence yes, exactly yeah. and uh man I remember both myself and Mike had to stand outside the house uh, because it was so exclusive, uh, making sure that only the right people yeah. made it there. And 12 hours in minus 40? Come on. I mean, uh, it mm-hmm. was just unreal. I had to go and buy, like, you know, like thermal this, thermal that. It was insane. Dude, I, the parking lot down the street is under construction. The other one was full. I had to park two blocks away. I almost canceled on you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. It's like, is it? Like, I don't it's know. just, it's just the cold. Though. But what's your true take on on the cold and missing out? I mean, do people miss a class ever because it's so, cold? It's funny for me. Like when I get to the gym and I see people. The, first of all, there's two things. Like one, when it's cold, and the other thing, when it's snowing. I always laugh when it's snowing because people just to freak out. Like I get calls from my managers. Are we going to close today? And I'm like, just because it's snowing. I want to stay open. <laughs> right. I want to stay open, and you know, people better show. Yeah. I, it's different though because I grew up like my instructor was a hard ass mm-hmm. like he was an old school hard ass and mm-hmm. he wasn't even from this country he's from a place that was hot and I remember when I was a kid I was like 14 or something and one day I didn't come to class because there was snow I had to walk and bus and all this stuff and I just you know it was just the mentality and I came the next day the next class afterwards and he goes where were you and I was like it's like three feet of snow dude <laughs> and he goes I don't care yeah. He goes, you find a snow... I'll never forget. He goes, you find a snowmobile, you find a helicopter, you make it to class. Mm-hmm. And then another week I came because I followed that advice. And right. I was the only kid that showed up. There was me and one other kid. And he said, he goes, show that kid some stuff for the bit, like the first bit, and mm-hmm. then I'll work with you. And I got a private lesson for half an hour. And to this day, I remember what he taught me that day. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I remember exactly what he taught See? me that day. Oh, man. And that was, that was like 30 years ago. Yeah. 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 For me, I had a breakout... People who know me well, I say on the regular that weakness is, uh, sorry, that the cold is an attitude. I say it, like, you know, I, I actually would go the winter. The first time I got a winter coat, a real winter coat, was two winters ago. Come on. Never had before. Okay. And it's not because I'm like, have Nordic blood or anything like that. I had a breakthrough. I was 17. I was with two buddies. And we were at Warden and Lawrence in Scarborough. We missed the bus at like two in the morning. And you know when you like, Man, it was so cold. I can't remember. And you're a cool guy in high school, so you're like, you like you got nothing on to begin with. I just had enough clothes that I could, I could show my chains. That's what it was about. <laughs> I remember we get to the bus stop, and you know how you used to check. Do they still have that that paper up in the TTC where you mm. actually check? Yeah, I guess people I w- still use paper. Know. I mean, because I think everyone uses it's on their your phone. phone yeah. Um. So remember, we checked it. We ran up to it, and it said that it it left like a minute ago. So we're like, okay, when's the next one? And it was like 50 minutes. Okay. And we're like, oh my goodness. So the three of us got in that bus shelter that is always freezing. It it seems like it's even colder because that wind tunnel comes through. And I remember there was three 17-year-old dudes and we were thinking about literally like hugging each other. I was going to say, you just took all your clothes off. You guys huddled. (laughs) And you you guys are brothers. Now you're brothers. We we even talked about it. I mean, we are brothers (laughs) for real, you know, from another mother. But we literally were like, we're like, yo, should we hug, man? You just, should we hug? That's what we're thinking. Would that be gay if I shivered inside you? (laughs) (laughs) Inside you. I mean, we're just doing it for survival, right? Yeah, that's what it was, right? right? You know, it's a little moment. So what ended up happening was, one one of the guys, he's Trinidadian, so he just, our boy Miguel. You met Miguel before, big man. Do you remember? I think Man? so, yeah. yeah. So Miguel, yeah. he just started doing a little rhythm on the on the bus shelter, and he started kind of going, right? And then literally, wow. uh, the other guy, my other boy Dalton and myself, we just started like dancing. And then we literally, we were dancing and jamming and singing songs. And this is a true story. Only in Scarborough. Like, yeah, exactly. We were literally- and then someone came and shot the bus shelter. <laughs> and the police came. We were exactly. transported to the hospital. Oh, and it was oh. warm. <laughs> Happy ending. But it's a choose your own story. <laughs> <laughs> choose your own adventure version. <laughs> so what ended up happening was, as we, were, as we were actually jamming, I remember seeing the bus kind of come behind me. And I kind of was like, the bus! Because we literally were like so in that we totally forgot about the cold mm-hmm. and we forgot we were waiting for the bus. So we literally run on the bus and when we get on the bus, we're, we just start like, man, we're just sweating, drenched in sweat. And I, I remember when we're taking that long ride going north thinking the cold has nothing. Like I, wow. I had that distinct thought that if I give it an inch, it's mm. going to take me out. Okay. And if I, so I don't even talk about it. I just, I do not let myself hear, oh, I'm cold or oh, man, things suck. I know or, other people that's the same way and it trips me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I had like I had a student and he was an instructor and he was into this all mind over matter stuff. Mm. And he did a lot of Russian system actually. Mm-hmm. And all winter he's known for wearing sandals, shorts, and a t-shirt, Are no you coat. Me? And I just look at this kid. I'm like, but God why though? Him. God bless him. Yeah. <laughs> but why? And yeah. for me, like if I'm driving, I'm just looking to make sure that the heated steering wheel has been on. And I turn it off by accident just to make sure that it was on. And I turn it back on because I'm so <laughs> yeah, I just want to be warm. Yes. Yeah, that's funny. Crazy. I met two two young Russian guys, Sistema guys too, and they said they said gold is weakness. That's mm. exactly what they said. Have some okay. vodka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Joel, legend has it. <clears throat> legend has it that Joel Gerson is uh, one of the pioneers of jiu-jitsu and MMA in Canada with a strong background in judo. Five-time Canadian jiu-jitsu champion, mm-hmm. including open weight class champion, three-time Ontario judo champion, and North America fearless fighting champion. And I guess, I mean, uh, diving into you, one of your greatest achievements was uh, back in 1998, uh, defeating Romino Sato. Um, and that was done by, I guess, the armbar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We saw the um, footage. That was gangster, man. Man. That was friggin' amazing. Uh, you know, I had a chance to view that fight, like I said, this past weekend. First time I ever saw that. It's very old. Yeah. I'm yeah. a lot 98. better now. 1998. Yeah. 1998. That was a beautiful year, 98. Thank you. I mean, tell us how that fight started to pave it's so where funny we are today. It's so funny because people tell me they saw that YouTube video and I cringe because I'm like, oh, I'm like, because you just see the mistakes and you see the stuff that, like, yeah. I went into MMA without any striking. So yeah. when I look back at that video, wow. you're looking at it with eyes from 2019. Right. Yeah. Everybody in MMA can strike now. Yeah. Like you, now everybody can do everything. And even since then, like I've learned how to box and kickbox and whatever. But back then, uh, when I look at how many tools I didn't have, when I look at the video where I, I have parents that tell me that they saw the video, I'm like, oh man, it's like, oh, it's funny. yeah, it's like a before shot, you know, yeah, like right. the before yeah. and after, like that's the yeah. before. I'm like, oh man. But tough. that but that fight was yeah. basically the start of, uh, I guess... I mean, paving your way, I guess, right into uh, into a kind of like where we are right now. I guess mainstream yeah, I think, notoriety. Yeah, I think it helped. Right. I, th- I think it definitely helped. It was a really st- I mean that was a really stressful time back then. Yeah. Because um, MMA coaching wasn't really organized. Mm-hmm. Uh, my coach at the time was out of the country for most of my training. So um, I was training with my boxing coach, mm-hmm. but MMA is like. Like you got to do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I mean, there's, I mean, that's a whole story. Like Sato at the time, we had seen video of him before. Mm. And um, like, because Carlos Newton had, had gone over to Japan and won. And so we were watching a, a fight card that he was on. Like all the students gathered around the VHS tape. Like we got the VHS tape. Yeah. VHS tape. Mm. Yeah. We gathered around and watched the fight. And VHS. then, uh, and Sato had just beaten, um, oh, his name's going to come back to me somebody that was really well respected at the time like a major major guy mm-hmm. and um i mean he was undefeated at the time he was undefeated he was on a 10 fight win streak yeah and it was all flashy um really um uh, crazy submissions like flying triangles and arm bars finishing wow. and he was uh, he finished bjj black belts with yep. submissions and stuff like that yep. mm-hmm. so anyways my coach had just literally said he goes don't worry you won't have to fight that guy mm-hmm. and then months later <laughs> we get a fax and we're like we'd, we'd like hold on, hold on hold on you get a what a fax. Okay. I know, right? What's, what's that? So for, for the viewers, for the viewers and the listeners, listeners. <laughs> uh, a fax was uh, an, even at the time, an outdated <laughs> method of transporting information. That's true. But it was the best of the worst. Yeah. Uh, anyways, and okay. um, we'll do a little segment on fax machines. It made which, it made a funny noise, and paper yeah. came out of your wall. I remember that it turned the, the world upside down when it first came out. People literally thought that the paper you put in actually came out wherever you sent it. Like the, yeah. the perception was, <laughs> if I put it here, yeah. Toronto, in New York, it, and it's like, how does it do? How does yeah, it yeah, do that? Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, so anyways, it was like uh, we were like Mister out of nowhere. It's like, um, oh no, they asked my coach if he had any other fighters, and at the time I was more senior um, than Carlos. Like I just wasn't fighting. I was in university. Yeah. Carlos was more active, and um, they asked my coach. They said, uh, "Do you have anybody else at your gym?" And my coach is like, "Maybe." Mm-hmm. And then um, they sent a fax. They said we would like Mister. Gerson to fight Mr. Sato. He's all Mr. Da, 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 on this mm-hmm. date, blah, blah, blah. And even if he loses, we promise uh, to pay him X and we'll bring him back two more times. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know what made me think of negotiating, but I was like, <laughs> I'm like, if I win, I want X. Yeah. Right? And the Japanese were like, okay. And they signed it and sent it back because they were like, there's no way. Like, it's right. not. Right. Yeah. And in the end, uh, it was the biggest it payout. Was... In, it was the biggest payout in Shudo history at the time. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. And it wasn't a lot of money, yeah. especially when your coach is taking 50% of your purse, yeah. which but mine a, was. But that's a milestone. That's a huge But milestone. it was like, it was just like, it was an, it was an experience, yeah. you know, because um, at the time in Japan, you know, he, 
he was he was a legend and he has he was a, he was a draw and he was a fan favorite mm-hmm. so after the fight like everything changed like we were we were taken around in limousines to restaurants and mm-hmm. signing autographs and stuff like mm-hmm. that and then i was on the cover of the largest magazine in japan which is like like even when i think about that like it's so crazy, crazy. Well, it's, it's like a david and goliath story in a way which is amazing because we know what happened to goliath so let me ask after that how did it change for you like did it did did it I mean, because a lot of young men who accomplish great things early, they, they usually have two... It's all been downhill since then. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's, there's, there's that high, right? And yeah. then there's that perception of like what, like, you know, the amount of work it took you to get there. Did you stick to the, the work after? Did you have moments where you were like, you know what, you rested as like that, that 90s movie, The Juice? You... I, I refocused my energies toward different things. Okay. Like professional fighting wasn't for me. I yeah. knew that at the, I knew that at the time. Yeah. Um, I was a kid that was bullied and the fact that I had gotten that far was like, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I overcompensated yeah. for the guy at 3 p.m. Yeah. at Lawrence Park Yeah, that made me run to my locker. Let's touch on the bullying. <laughs> Let's touch on the bullying thing right you know, now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, you want to meet now? Yeah. yeah. Like, we can do it now. Yeah. <laughs> was that an inspirational for you? Like, like, I mean, obviously you said you touched on some bullying. Issues. I mean, I was yeah. bullied too when I was younger as well and I see it quite a but bit. But you're a big guy. What were you bullied for? I mean, it was big and I was quite fat as well, right? Mm. So so you got bullied for, you know, and I was Kids also... Kids are the worst. Yeah, and I also I got in trouble so much that I was switching school to school. So for myself, it was just a bad experience. But being bullied, was that an inspirational, uh, like a motivational thing for you to say, I want to get into... Some, yeah, you know. I mean, I as a kid, I knew that I craved the discipline. And what's funny is yeah. I didn't know the word for it. Yes. I just knew. And then I remember when we'd go to these martial arts clubs to like check them out, the word discipline came up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that. That's that's what I know. I I need that. I want that. Yeah. How old were you when you were identifying that? Twelve, thirteen. Yeah, same for me. Yeah, and but I knew I needed this. I knew I wanted the self defense. Like you know, I I, I used to watch you know the Rockies and all the Karate the, all Kid. The, yeah, that was yeah, 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 and then uh, and and the Bruce Lee and stuff like that, but also even like professional wrestling, right? Like mm-hmm. I was in, I would wrestle my pillows and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But I knew I needed to learn, and I know that even back then, I I remember I checked out a karate school, like a really well respected karate school, and we'd be standing in lines in rows doing katas, and I remember as a kid, I would, I think I was like nine or eight, and I was like, I was in standing in line, I'm like, this is not gonna help me. Hmm. Hmm. I, I just knew. I just. I remember thinking, like, if somebody's running at me in an alley, I can't. This is not going to help me. You knew wow. then. I knew, you knew then. then. Like, I just knew because I don't know. There was something. I had been pushed around or whatever. And yeah. then I, I came across a, a guy that was teaching. He called it Israeli martial arts, but it was jujitsu. Mm-hmm. It was judo and jujitsu. Mm-hmm. And actually, before I, felt, like, I remember my cousin is got me into it because my cousin would. He was bigger than me, and he'd be like, "Grab me this way," and I'm like, "Why?" What's and I'm like, ah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. he would counter like a full Nelson or a bear hug. I'm like. This is what I got to learn. Yeah. Wow. I got to learn this shit. Yeah. And then I started going and that was it. And then I remember I finished my first year and I'd quit everything up until that point. Like I hated skating. I couldn't skate. It's and funny. I actually, yeah. because of the bullying, I was actually put into by my mom, judo. Oh, so really? I actually did judo uh, for probably, I would say, uh, just a little over a year. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you remember where? Winfield Junior High School. I okay. think the guy's name was Mundi or Bundy, one of the things. But I remember two terms, Imponsi and Nagi yeah. and uh, Soto Gary. Yeah, good, Those good memory. I remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, you just swore in Japanese to all our memories. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. However, um, my mom pulled me out because uh, they were doing a demonstration and uh, one of the uh, the female instructors, she, she, I guess she, she flipped me and I fell down wrong. So it was my fault. I didn't fall down properly. It's not your fault. It's, it's her fault. Okay. If you weren't ready to be thrown properly, okay. then she should have helped you or corrected you. Right. It depends. Like maybe your mother freaked out. Uh, she, and that was it. She, Do you have a Jewish mother? No. Oh. Gr- Greek. 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 Yeah. Okay. But the minute that happened, out. But you get hurt? I got hurt. I broke, I, I uh, sprained my arm. I couldn't, I, I mean. How old were you? Uh, probably I would say 13, 14. That's super rare. Yeah, man. And uh, and, and wow. she pulled me out and that was it. My judo days were done. <laughs> however, however, uh, I, I, uh, knowing what I did back then and, and I mean I see the significance I actually would sweep uh, you know a couple of people and for fun you know just because uh, if you know what you're doing um, but to me it was it was a good base and I, I bring that back to the bullying aspect yeah. my kids I have two kids yeah. and um, you know I'm by no means uh, there are any uh, traces of bullying happening with them whatsoever mm-hmm. um, you know they get along very well with their kids however they're young grades one's in grades uh, 8 and one's in grade 6 if they were to start getting bullying, mm-hmm. bullied, mm-hmm. my first goal to would be, all right, you're going right now mm-hmm. into a, uh, a mixed martial arts because you need to learn how to defend yourself. Is that a regular thing that happens with parents bringing kids? Is that the motivation? Big time. Yeah. 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 And what's funny is I, I kind of see it 
uh, as something that would be a good precautionary thing to do. Like you do it before your kid's bullied. But also there's so many benefits to the training, excuse me, that have nothing to do with bullying. Mm-hmm. That the bullying or the anti-bullying is one aspect. Mm-hmm. Right. But there's so many other things that are happening to the kids in terms of development and character building that are so useful. But I think as a, a preventative measure, I think it's really important. And mm-hmm. I, I listen, I believe in MMA and, and, and jiu-jitsu, uh, especially for kids. Um, and But a lot of times I just feel like it comes down to the instructor. And I thought you were going to ask me what style would be best for kids. But I think a lot of times it's like the right coach. Right. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. You could have the, the right style and the wrong coach, and it's not it's not good for that kid. Right. So. Do you have Do you have like a, a story close that you can think of of a, of a child that was brought in maybe with zero self esteem? I, I mean, got, you probably we have, have so many endless. stories of parents coming back and being like, "I just want to tell you on Monday," uh, and it would be a girl that was grabbed by a boy, mm. and she flipped him, and blah blah blah. And <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, it happens. It happens like. Every couple months, I can you have to understand between both schools, there's a lot of kids, but yeah. it happens a lot. And those are just the stories I hear about. Right. And what's great with, with it's the same thing like any kind of school. Like as soon as kids find out that you, your kid or you as a kid are training, it's suddenly like, oh, okay, let's let's let's, let's leave him alone. Hundred percent. Right. Like he does MMA. I'm right. not. I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, he for does sure. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> and like, there's uh, there's tons of videos you can kind of pull up online where you see that stuff. I mean, I remember yeah. vividly a kid in my school where it was exactly what you just said. Oh. You don't want to mess with Jimmy. Yeah. He knows karate. Yeah. And, and uh, it, that was it. You don't mess with Jimmy. You know what I mean? I mean, he, for all I know, he could have sucked, right? But, you know. I remember, uh, <laughs> I, remember, I, I, remember I, I, uh, I went to nationals for judo when I was in high school. And the thing with, uh, school, with sports like that is uh, it's not – like in the morning announcements, all the team uh, sports, how they did on the weekend gets announced. So it was like, oh, the volleyball team, yay, and basketball, and, uh, and rugby, and blah, blah. But – Everything that you're doing extracurricular, nobody knows about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I gotta send a message. So, I'm like, Ooh, yeah. so I, I sent a message to the uh, to the office that I was going to junior nationals or I'd gone to junior nationals or whatever, just to everybody let everybody know, like, okay, yeah, just in case just you were thinking about, yeah, yeah to plant that seed. Yeah, mm, yeah, this is what's going on. Yeah, working strategy. From yeah, then. that's good. Marketing 101. I know. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Get yeah, the yeah. word out. So yeah. what would be the message that you would have for parents mm. that are having a bullying issue right now? We're actually going to be uh, uh, talking with a, a guest down the road that you know is all about anti-bullying and stuff. But mm-hmm. the, the message uh, that you would give parents that's saying, I'm, I'm having issues right now. My child is getting bullied. What do I do? In my experience, um, the administration can't handle bullies. Other teachers can't handle bullies. Principals can't handle bullies. Um, I think bullying is handled at the same level that it is started. In other words, it starts with the kids and it has to end with the kids. Mm. So that advice of like, run and tell the teacher, no. Because those kids are just going to keep doing it and it's subtle. And the other thing is nowadays, like there's physical bullying, but now with the internet, there's all kinds of other bullying. Like there's bullying by exclusion. Like I'm going to take a picture with all of you, but I'm not going to tag you. Yeah, right. Which is subtle. Like that's like some nasty stuff. But in terms of like the physical stuff, as a kid, you sometimes just got to take matters into your own hands mm-hmm. and, and then deal with the consequences. Well, the teachers, just like parents, I mean, I can tell you this, when my kids are going off and fighting, I just stop listening. So imagine a teacher, oh, you know, my damn this, oh, this man. Billy keeps on bugging me. Eventually you shut off Yep. and then it things just get worse. But the right? other thing people don't realize is this is part of, it is part of growing up. Like you'll never get rid of bullying. You'll get rid of degrees of bullying. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, what happened at the private school down the street. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of stuff. I heard that and I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that happened at camp too. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure everybody's got a story of like oh, yeah. hearing something like that happening. Yeah. So there's degrees of bullying, mm-hmm. but I think um, it's in kids' nature to look and smell weakness and just like a pack. If you go to the dog park, yeah, dogs are trying to train other dogs Always to behave a certain each way. Other. Yes. Always. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's life. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. So to to go back to answering your question, I think the parents have to find the right academy for their child. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Right, that's good. It's got to, and it can't listen. The right academy not might not be close, so you got to figure it out. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. That's good. Good. Yeah. Are you still getting bullied anymore? No, no. I mean, I, I blossomed that. He away. has his own security detail. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, He's got maybe, four dudes around yeah, him. Yeah. Maybe that's the why. Yeah, that's right. right? Oh, you never know. Yeah, you could you could unlock something. You, you yeah. know, you wouldn't be the first person yeah. to create a personal yeah. army. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but this is but it's but it's interesting though. Like, look at what he's done business wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, look at what I've done because I was bullied. Right. Yeah. And and how it relates to things, and look at how 
what you've done. Right. You were bullied, and what did you do? Right. You created a force field around you of, right. of guys that will, you know, take care and protect. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. We're here with Joel, a psychiatrist, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, listen, it's if true, you want, though. but you want to go one true. level deeper. Yeah. I was asthmatic as a kid. Right. Yeah. I was asthmatic. I was in and out of the hospital constantly. Yeah. Mm. What do I do now? Right. I try and choke other people and, <laughs> yeah. not, and not get choked. Yeah. Right. So who the, knows? Like, like as a the kid. Irony. And that's the other thing with bullying. Like some of the greatest people to live were like GSP was bullied. The founder of judo, judo Jigoro Kano was bullied. Like it just goes on and on and on. So while you don't want your kid bullied at the same time from everything bad, mm. there comes something good. Mm-hmm. And things will come from your child from having been bullied that you can't predict. You mm-hmm. could raise your kid in a bubble, him perfect, all this stuff, but everything taken care of, and then go and become a drug addict. Mm-hmm. Like you just never know. I yep. see it all the time. Yep. Or your kid could be bullied and stay inside and do something on his computer and come up with an idea. Like you just don't know. Yeah. So. I've been following you on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, oh, just, shit, I got to I mean, go private. No, no, no. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's time to I mean, Joel, private one account. Of, one of the things I noticed about you, I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but you're very active, okay, very active in, in your classes. And, uh, I mean, you're not just the owner that sits down and, and just looks at it. You're very active. And collects and, the cash. Yeah, exactly. And, and you still look to be in great physical shape. Uh, when you <laughs> the shirt, well, the plaid, the, <laughs> it's like it's thinning. It's, it's working. actually the opposite. The it's working. Yeah, but, the lines. But, but, when yeah, we go back, don't look over here. Look over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when we go back twenty years, right? Yeah. Literally, I mean, last year was twenty years ago. Yeah. Body wise, yeah. What you can do from twenty years ago to today, uh, do you feel like you're the same, Joel? Do you feel like you're that's the a good same? question? Uh, so technically, I'm light years from where I was. Okay. So on a technical level, you can't compare. Okay. I would say. Um, that's a good question. Um, I would say in some ways I was probably like more flexible back then. Mm-hmm. Um, but aside from that, and like maybe my back had more, like I had more of it. I could do like a more of an arch to my back and this mm-hmm. and that and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You make adjustments. Right. But like I'm, I'm training now, some, like I'm training now constantly. Mm. And I go through spurts. Like I might be injured or whatever. I might t- take a break or whatever. But um I can't do, uh, I can't push my body to how it was before in terms of doing weights and training and, you know, training twice a day and three times a day or whatnot. Um, but I can do more with what I have. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. I see. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 You know how to utilize it. It's, yeah. You know, it's efficient. Yeah. You yeah. know how to, you know how to apply pressure. You, you, your, your reflexes for certain moves are better. Yeah. Uh, your ability to improvise and you have more tools with which to be creative. Now you came out of retirement last in 2018 for an open <laughs> tournament. What the thinking before was it? Was it a spontaneous thing? Was it something that that you thought you know what? It's a good question. Yeah. Um, I had um, I had thought about competing. It's always like in the back of your head, but for me, it's like I competed so much growing up that and it was so stressful that. I just like, for me, I'm competing in the marketplace. Like I got to focus on my business or whatever. And it mm-hmm. just got to a point where it's like, okay, everything is pretty set. Like my schedule is pretty open. And I kept getting, I kept hearing from people that I was training with, like outside of my gym that I should compete. And mm-hmm. I remember like I'd go and spar with friends that were active competitors that had won uh, provincials or nationals or whatever. And I'd do well against them. Mm. And um, I, would, I would always think like how great it would be to come back out of mm-hmm. retirement when... And then go back into retirement. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Um, and um, I just kept hearing, you know, do you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And then I always thought, like, if I were to do this, I'd want to le- I'd want to do it outside of the country, hmm. because I just kind of don't want the eyes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'd want to keep it on the DL, but mm-hmm. it's really hard to do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's hard because then you could be interviewed on podcasts. Yeah, you know. no. It's just, so where was it? Where was that? It was in New York. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, and it was it was a ton of work. It was super stressful. Yeah. yeah. Was there a time during the tournament that you thought I regretted it? You're like, what? Really? What? Am, yeah, yeah. what am how I did doing? you place? Uh, third, but I, I didn't do well. Like, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't like how I did it all. And it was mm-hmm. like I could feel like there's like I just felt the okay. So here's the problem. You asked me like physically wise, you know, how am I versus before? I had all kinds of joint issues tr- in training. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do strength training. So I couldn't do any push-ups or pull-ups. Like when I say any, like I tried to do five, but the pain was unbearable. Like just tendon- tendonitis. Oh, and tendonitis I've had, I've had and shoulder Not impingements fun. and stuff like that. Yeah. So I would train. I would do jujitsu, 
because once I was warm, like I'd be okay, I could roll. Yeah. But but physically, I'm at 25 percent of my strength, mm -hmm. and I could feel it like against these guys that are actively competing. They're getting coached by world champions, literally like. The sidelines I'm looking at, Marcelo Garcia and JT Torres watching the fight. Mm -hmm. like these guys are getting coached. And they're co <laughs> what's great is like when you hear world champions coach against you, and he's like, and all you hear in the back in the back of the room is, he doesn't like it, do it again. I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> let, let him just fight his fight. Yeah, like, yeah, let him yeah, do yeah. his thing. Right. Between like me it, and him, yeah. I don't have a coach right now. Can You know, like, I'm already in New York. It's my first time out. Like, that's how it is. Be nicer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I just, I didn't feel like, um, I felt like, you know, there's an expression a buddy of mine said when I was training. He's like, uh, the only way out is through. I was like, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to do it. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. And that's what it was like. The only way out is through. I'm going to do it. But, I, you know, I'm not, I, I didn't go in at like what I would like to have gone in. Yeah. But I just said, I don't care. I want to do it anyways. And, um, and um, I don't know some people like thought like my performance was good, but I just I don't know I just I just wanted to execute better. Mm -hmm. So, is that would you say you want to give it another try? If I do, uh, it would be when I'm like able to do better strength training and, and right. not, which I am now. Like I can good. Like I'm like I'm I'm better. But the thing is, like it's kind of like a car, like a race car. Um, at a certain point, an old race car, it only can rev at a certain RPM before like things start to clank. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. So yeah, I'd like to go back out there. Yeah. Well, if you do, let us know. Thanks. Let us know. It'd be good. You, know, you guys can sponsor me, and I can get some TRT going. Yeah, you nice. Go. And you have some more voices in <laughs> we'll, there. We'll saying. do TRT Joel. It'll yeah. be like yeah, a yeah, yeah, two point yeah. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Come in good. there and be like, oh man, I'm just gonna fight in three different weight categories. Yeah. Oh man. Amazing. Feel great. Oh, yeah. Man. Exactly. Go all out. Yeah. Um. You know, back to the the bully aspect. When when you were talking about the bullying thing, I, I just again one of the one you had flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting like shivers. But that's a big part of your childhood. <laughs> yeah. When you think back, like, yeah. I mean, I can. Yeah. So I, a movie that obviously that I loved was The Karate Kid, sure. right? Because you know, it's great. Yeah. So let me ask you this: yeah. You obviously watched The Karate so, Kid. So so when I was in New York, it was like Cobra Kai. Because, like, <laughs> the other team was like Cobra Kai because they all wore wow. black. Like no all mercy. the guys that I was fighting all had black kimonos. No yeah. They were American. Did anybody say sweep the leg? Dude, I, they didn't even warm up. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like, I have broke this sweat. I'm just seeing these guys sitting there. I'm like, aren't you going to warm up? Right. Like, And they're just chill, like as if it's just a regular Saturday afternoon in their backyard, which it wow. was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but it was totally like Cobra to Kai. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't like it. Do it again. <laughs> Finish him. Yeah. He's, he's had enough. Well, he's, yeah. Well, yeah. One of those movies, like I said, it just it resonates well. But the thing that I loved about it is obviously, you know, when Daniel's son had problems, Mr. Miyagi come and saved him. Did yes. you ever have any issues or not mm. issues? Did you have any situations or stories where oh, man. you were the Mr. Miyagi of, of, of oh. the story where you actually mm -hmm. saw someone in need and you came in and protected them and you just became Mr. Miyagi and took out five guys? No, 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 no. no. No, six, I have other stories. Six guys, but six guys. <laughs> I have other stories, but like, I mean, no, like I've like I've had to step in and like protect people. Okay, yeah. so or, let's but go. I've de-escalated situations. Of course, I mean, like in anything, like even in our line of work, your hundred percent line of de-escalation is going to be through your communication first, right? Yes, but I've de-escalated through like a short physical, like a very quick physical warning. Yes, and verbal command. Right. Yes. But I've but I haven't like nothing in like you know uh, in a, a Steven Seagal movie where like I'm starting to like roll a cue ball in yeah, a towel yeah, 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 yeah. and like exactly. spin it and like yeah. like nothing like that. God, I wish. Like, would you so have cool. an uh, like an actual <laughs> like, like frying pan upside the exactly. head? Would you have a story or, or or like someone if someone's listening and they said, you know what, if I did that and applied it, I could probably deescalate the situation. Look, a, a lot of people they just man, it's just they don't they don't think. Yeah. Right. Before they're about to do something and what they're gonna, what the outcome is gonna be. So yeah, being able to kind of just be in a place where you can just see everything like Matrix style and be like. Man. But that's the thing with the training stuff moves slowly. Right. You know, it's it's kind of like uh, Michael Jordan. I think had this analogy once where he's, you know, he's some and where he's talking about like you know they said how do you do that shot so fast? It's like it's slow for him. But that's the thing. Um, I asked I asked my boxing coach once. Or I was like because um, I knew he was training a guy that I knew. It was a pro mm -hmm. MA fighter, and I knew he wasn't the fastest guy. And I said, "Can you make someone faster?" Because, because, and just shout out to Everton McEwen, best boxing coach, <laughs> has the Canadian record for most knockouts. And he said, "I can make someone faster, but what I can do is um, build their 
um, their movements in such a way and their reflexes and their experience such that things um, slow down. Hmm. Hmm. And for me, when I'm fighting, when I'm rolling or whatever, I kind of use the analogy of a movie. And you have a movie film. There's all these little windows of film. So you can, you know, when the, mo- the movie's going, you don't see the film. But when you're in the moment, when you're in that, that flow state, you, those little tiles appear slower for you. And I think that when you're trained, when you're in a street situation and stiff stuff starts to happen, you react and you respond in ways that average people can't comprehend. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is where the self-defense becomes tricky from a legal standpoint because something might happen and you might take somebody out. Mm-hmm. But you saw that. You saw the guy raise his hand about to lunge at you. Mm-hmm. But the other person didn't see it. So all they see is you attacked him. Right. Yep. So these are all things that you got to take into consideration. Yeah, factor, yeah. Oh, I like that. The frames slow down. Very it's pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. You know, something for me when it comes, I'm I'm no stranger to conflict and uh, street fighting. Uh, my bullying story is I got, I guess I was, I was always pretty. Uh, I was always an aggressor, and because I was an aggressor, and uh, I had you know I accomplished a lot really young. Whether it was in school playing piano, playing, doing sports, art, whatever it was. At some point, I became the show-off. And I remember I, did, I wasn't even trying to. I was like, when I'm doing something, I could be so in, the fire alarm could go off, the building could be on fire, and I don't even know because I'm so focused. It drives my wife nuts, you know, but it's, it's my secret sauce. In that, in that focus of whatever my endeavor was, I did well. Yeah. And that next circle just said, this guy's showing off. Look at this guy. Yeah. You know, we're just asked to draw a picture, whatever, <laughs> Michelangelo here, whatever. And it's slowly, and then by the time I was like grade five, guys had enough because this is a true story. A lot of the girls liked me. Okay. And I remember in grade five, an entire class, all the guys in that class, because we had to split grade, they made it their mission to make my life hell. That's what they said. Mm. And I got I got in a fight every single recess. Oh, wow. Every recess, I just knew I got ready. But I'm not, so, like, people who know me, I don't back down. That's good. For anything. So I, I remember, like, when I look back on it, it was crazy that at some point I realized, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through it. And I remember, I had no joke, I remember one recess where I came running out the portable because we had both portables <laughs> opposite. Remember the portables? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I think you're in the, you run out, you're already yeah. in, a, in I w- a field. I was right. re- yeah. <laughs> and and I, w- I was ready in a frame of mind yeah. to, to throw down. And I remember running down the stairs and the guys coming out and they're joking and I just attacked the first three. Okay, and I just switched the power and they were just like, what the... And then I became, I was crazy. I was that guy. <laughs> and what ended up happening is uh, it, the word spread and then... All the grade eights are like, yo, come chill with us. Oh, wow. Okay. And it literally, I was the grade five wow. that, would, that they wanted around. Okay. Which led to a, a lot of other problems. That's amazing. Okay. So we have <laughs> the opposite story. Yeah. So I actually, I got like adopted by the grade eights, wow. um, which is funny because, and then they actually would always bring me in the schoolyard and the teachers like, and I was way undersized. They're like, what, what's that grade two doing over there? That's funny. And they'd be like, get over here. Right. You know. Does that mean you got grade eight girls? Ah, uh, no comment. No comment. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, maybe we. Dude, I, you're my idol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get a great grade eight girl if I was in grade nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like back then. I know. I, I have that. the opposite story. I had the path to my locker, to my bike, to home mapped out. I'd be. Wow. I knew which books I was sitting at my desk. I knew how quickly I had to get that class. I had like. I knew the path I was going to take to my locker. I knew which books I'd need to leave in my locker. Because, you know, the books are, like, heavy. Right. Which yes. books I need to take, which books I need to leave. How I was going to go, but 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 I would literally be, not just at my locker, I would be at my bike unlocking it before kids were at their locker. Oh, my mm. goodness. Just so I'd have a clear path. And wow. Was, yeah. This is like, I mean, this is like elite protection. This is like the never-ending story. No, it's true, though. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, how... Yeah, yeah. The never-ending pussy. Yeah. No, 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 no. But <laughs> the movie, The never-ending like, story. Remember, uh, never ending remember story. the kid was running and that... Little Snuffleopolis. Yeah. yeah, there's like some weird llama. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> what is that thing? I don't know. Yeah. These 80s, 80s shout outs. 80s shout outs, exactly. No, what's amazing about, so look, for protection, elite protection, the principles of it is you can't hit a target you don't see. Mm. That's one of the ones. So a lot of guys come into this industry or the security industry, high level security, and they, they think that they have to be some master weapon, you mm-hmm. know, that they have to be able to just like headlock 20 guys at once and 
Um, but it, it's a, the the greatest asset is strategic thinking, which you were already exhibiting. Cri- it, like I mean, to factor AKA in survival of the fittest. But that's what right. it, yeah. it comes from there. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. uh, it's not just like you know, okay, I'm going to do this and that. It's it's actually grounded in reality. And I think that's what's really cool about your the practicality. I I say this. That's what I really respect about you. Kind of, you know, the martial art world. You're inside it. You're in the mi- in the middle of it. There's a lot of, I mean, in the 80s, anything that the martial art world threw at us, maybe because of cinema, we just believed. Yeah. And then slowly, it, it, we started to see it. Like, I, I know so many guys that said, him hey, a black belt, this and that, and they got smacked around. They got beat up all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, all the time, okay? Um, and this is before that they could put on Instagram all these videos of them doing some fancy katas and kicks and breaking things. I say that because I even working in security, I've had I've worked alongside guys who all the time would talk about their martial art training, and when something happened, they ran. Okay, that's the truth. Other times they froze. Okay, and other times if they got hit, they couldn't recover. Okay. Yeah. And so let me ask you about that. The the practicality. You learn something, you train, and then there's an element of testing, and then there's testing in a static, sterile environment where it's safe. Yeah. In the dynamic of class. Yeah. And then there's the the real world. Okay, so it seems that you were able to kind of start your journey understanding where the ground is. You know. And so John Danaher, and for those of you who don't know who John Danaher is, he's um, he's a black belt under Hanzo who's considered right now the Hannibal Lecter of jiu-jitsu. He's like a great mind of the, the mixed martial arts game. But years ago. He wrote the foreword to um, a jiu-jitsu book by Hoyler and Henzo, and he wrote something very interesting. And what he said was, what we discovered with mixed martial arts, and the UFC in particular, he said all these people, talk, you know, they talked about a death touch and um, being able to knock somebody out and special kind of training, or if I hit you here, you're going to go out and blah, blah, blah. And he said, what people finally learned was that it is better to train hard in a soft art than soft in a hard art. Mm. Mm. So, for example, there are certain martial arts that we can't go 100%, dude, because if we go 100%, I'm going to kill you and break your neck. And yes. We just right. can't, can't do it. Yeah. Right. Then there's other martial arts where you can train hard every day. Like in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, we go 100% every day. I'm going to try to armbar. You're going to try and choke me. We're going to try and get on top, try and get dominant position. So it's better to train in that context um, than in the context of that kind of superficial bubble. Yeah. And the, but I have a footnote to that. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's better for the average person that can't do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for example, to then train in that other art. What what would be something that you'd recommend for someone wanting to get into, like a a pick of the MMA world, something in defense, like to to be able to de-escalate? Would that be Jiu-Jitsu? Or is there something I else? think a de-escalation is a verbal conflict. De-escalation yes. is an energy. Right. Yes. And that energy can come from training and experience or it can come from growing up with two other brothers. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? We like, it, you, that, yeah, yeah it, you can source it from different places. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think, like, martial arts that I like for street situations are Muay Thai, um, Krav Maga, depending on the instructor, because mm-hmm. there's different instructors, different styles. I find, like, you know, mm. um, everybody's different. They have, like, their own flavor, mm-hmm. depending on how it's trained. Um, judo. Obviously, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. Uh, boxing is really good. Mm-hmm. Like, you can Footwork. take just timing, reflexes, mm. you know, say what you want about developing a knockout punch. It's, not everybody can do it, but I've seen guys take out three, four guys just with punches. Yes. Like, you can, you know, with that range. Yeah. So, I, I think anything that is, um, that I, I think the, the arts that can be done as a sport. Are ideal. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of MMA gyms in the city. Yeah. A lot of them. And, um, you know, obviously you have two locations. You go one in Toronto, one in Vaughan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you also, you know, you, your gym has gotten quite a, quite a little bit of notoriety. Right? You have a lot of, uh, you know, celebs that have, you know, reached out to come down, uh, people of influence. Um, what makes your gym different uh, from other MMA gyms? Um, that's a good question. I, I I want to say everything. I think the a big part of the gym is the culture. We don't have a meathead culture, mm-hmm. so a lot of you, a lot of gyms, um, they really wanted to focus on building fighters. Mm-hmm. Um, and the problem that I have with fighters is they beat up the regular people. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with fighters if that's what that's who you want to attract. Right. But I like the regular people that want to do it as a hobby or recreation or as a method of getting 
in shape. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like we've we've had guys come out of you know divorces, just destroyed, mm-hmm. and they start training and like they quit smoking, they lose weight, they get a girlfriend. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, mm-hmm. People yeah. turn their lives around right. um, mm-hmm. in all kinds of different contexts. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think so. The I, average person looking to upgrade versus yeah, and yeah. I think I think our approach to everything is is different. Like. Uh, we're very professional with respect to everything. Like we mm-hmm. try and answer the phones a certain way, we try and greet you a certain way. Yeah. The instructors are, t- you know, teach classes a certain way. And don't get me wrong, there's lots of great instructors around the around the city. Um, there's other great gyms as well. Mm-hmm. It's just I kind of like to take a holistic approach to everything. So yeah. it, it's not just this. It's well, everything has to be a certain way. Right. Yeah. It's a full experience. You definitely get that. I know like, you know, with your place being professionally cleaned, it's spotless. There's order. There's <coughs> just things that you'd think, you know, you go to the lockers and the change rooms and it gives you it's everything that you would want it to be, which is amazing. Your Thank your, you. your tuck shop, everything like it's kind of like in, in, incredibly thought out. That's just amazing. You know, for what we do, we always try to do it by design. That is not by accident. Yeah. That people come and they have this experience and when you walk in your facility you see that care. You oh, definitely thanks. see that care, and then if it's in the in the bones and the mats and the towels, then it automatically translate. You'll think, you know what? I can trust these instructors. You guys, you guys remember New York's reputation decades ago? Yeah, crime, yeah, mm-hmm. all that stuff. And so, what happened? You guys remember the story? What happened? So the the, the, ma- the mayor said, yeah, they did studies, the sociological studies. They did studies, and so what happened is it was all the kinds of little things. They realized that people were jumping turnstiles. Yeah, mm. so who's jumping turnstiles? started looking to who's jumping turnstiles and the subway cars were getting spray painted yeah so what it was an environment that people didn't give a shit yeah or they thought they can get away with it or they felt that other people didn't give a shit so they just it just was a slippery slope yeah so what they would do is by the time the did i say streetcar or subway subway Subway. the subway by the time the subway would get to the end of the stop and it covered in spray paint they would literally repaint it right away wow it was repainted the same day wow so the the car would go out and all the guys that were had spray painted they're like it's oh, done. it was yeah. it was a waste of time yeah mm. so that started slowing down so then everybody started respecting the space more yeah mm. so what I tell my managers is like mm. so see that light that's hanging that's the beginning of the end because mm-hmm. then people stop giving a shit mm-hmm. they'll throw paper towel on the floor mm-hmm. they'll leave a water bottle out and it's little things it's subtle but it like instructors see that and they start to feel like, oh, this this place is ghetto, so I'm going to be ghetto. Exactly. And you kind of fit. So for my whole thing is I just wanted to attract a better crowd. So my whole thing is like, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, the standard should be higher. Mm-hmm. Everything should be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people just carry themselves differently. Yeah, versus neglect, right? I mean, yeah. all those things are signs of neglect. You know, oh, that's that's really cool. Really cool. So New York, but the, end, but the bottom line is New York turned itself around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. cleaning the streets yeah, literally. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. I mean that's why they do this. Like, you know, they, you know, they transform that park or that basketball court. You know, it all matters because then, then the neighborhood starts to take pride in it. That's but that's what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what's the next big move? What do you got going plant? What do you have planned? I'm right. face. I'm, I'm giving the club a facelift. Are you? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got because it's ten years, right? The ten year anniversary for the Toronto location. Okay. Right. Amazing. So right now, as we speak, I've got guys doing this one wall. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I, like they're do, changing this one wall. Um, I've got an artist, um, Arturo. He's a famous graffiti artist, but mm-hmm. um, I, I, I brought him on to do a special Instagram wall because people want to take pictures and like post it on Instagram. Nice. So it's this custom wall. It's like thirty feet across, ten feet up. Um, just different things related to the club, and you, and you can stand in front of whatever part that you identify with. And take a picture or whatnot. So nice. just like up, you, updating, it's like a cool. facelift, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's I'm not opening cool. up another one. Oh, no, no, okay. no, I got enough. I'm nothing in the Durham region. <laughs> I've been, mm. I've, you know, honestly, sometimes the best deals you would make are the ones you don't take. And for me, <laughs> yeah. it's like, Ooh, I like yeah, that. I'm not. If anything, um, people are asking me to help them consult uh, for their businesses, so I might be spending more time with that and mentoring other gym owners and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What, what's uh, what's something that uh, a lot of people don't know about you? I was a fat kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was a chubby kid. Yeah. And uh, uh, so we, uh, my dad was a professor. Mm-hmm. My dad was a, he was a PhD in 18th century French literature. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I'm kind of a nerd. Like it's mm-hmm. kind of in the family. But we, we lived in France for a year when I was a kid in the south of France. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so we were in the south of France and um, I basically lived off of like baguette 
and my mother would make homemade mayonnaise. Yeah. With like garlic, it's like an aioli. Yeah. <laughs> and then we moved we moved to the Middle East for, for like uh, four months. So I was eating shawarma every day. Mm. And the shawarma there is not like the shawarma here. Right. They compete against each other. Mm. Okay. So you can literally like have eaten two bites out of your shawarma and it's all you can eat. Like you can keep topping up. Right. <laughs> you right. can just keep refilling it. Right. Really? Right. Okay. So I came back as a kid. I was 13. I came back. And like, I remember my membership card at the Samurai Club when I was a kid. It was a picture of when I came back from, uh, from uh, France and, uh, and Israel. And I had this like neck. And <laughs> I had my jean jacket with a Samoyed patch. Don't ask. Oh, like oh, on the nice. back. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I deserved every bit of that bullying. Let's face it. Come on. And, uh, and, I, was, and I was chubby. Yeah, I like to eat. Okay, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah. I need to train. I yeah. train so I'm not, you know. Look, and as you get older, obviously your metabolism slows down, so uh, I'm finding out right now. Yeah. So. Let me ask you, for all the things that you've accomplished, I mean, to have national titles, pretty amazing. You know, to, you know. Have have Joe Rogan as a fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which was really cool. We, yeah, got, we saw that. that. Yeah. yeah, Joe Rogan, if you guys don't know him, look him up. <laughs> um, you know, but you know the Renaissance man. He is basically shouted out Joel here and on, on on his podcast on the show it was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. It's pretty amazing. Like he actually says that he's a fan of yours. That like, uh, like how was it? To I, I hear believe that? his exact words were, "I was a huge fan of that guy." <laughs> that's what he said. Which is like, that's it. Check, please. I'm out. I know. <laughs> yeah, I just like the fact that he knew who I was. And yeah. that wasn't at like you know you know filmed with like a Motorola Razor at some bar. I mean, he said that on his podcast. He was being very nice. He's a very nice guy. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. They even Experience. played they even played footage of your of your arm bar. Yeah. Sato. They, 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 they yeah. played it on the show. So when I die, you can play the video of Rogan <laughs> playing the video. Okay. <laughs> of that fight. There you go, man. At my funeral. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now with the what would you say your your greatest greatest accomplishment is? Because you have all these, you have all these. I think I think yeah. staying in business successfully uh, for as yeah. long as we have. I think a lot of people want to open up MMA gyms, and um, I think that uh, I think a lot of people do. But I think just like any business, I think just um, sticking around and being sustainable mm-hmm. um, and surviving. Mm-hmm. You know, when I opened up the gym, people thought I was crazy because it was the height of the recession. I remember I have an uncle in France who's a really successful businessman. He came to visit and he saw it because I had taken over an industrial unit. I was converting it, like the Toronto location. Right. Yeah. And I didn't have a partner. I was doing it, I was doing it by myself. And he walked in and uh, he looked around. <laughs> and this was like the height of the recession. And he turns to my mother and confides her. And he goes, your son is nuts and he's going to lose his shirt. Hmm. And he's a really successful guy. Mm-hmm. So it was like the oracle <laughs> predicting like the end of the earth right yeah and uh and uh and just like being able to like prove him wrong i had another uncle that also said don't do it yeah who's also a businessman he's like don't wow. do it it's not a business da, da, da. so just kind of like proving them wrong in a sense but yeah. but just surviving and 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 making making a good life out of it and uh i i like the atmosphere that i've created there i mm-hmm. think there's just a, a great vibe for families and guys and like, I remember there's days where we were supposed to close for, like, family day or whatnot over the holidays. And I'm like, no, no, I want to go and teach. That's good. And I'll man. message my students. I'm like, yeah, anybody want to roll? Like, because it's just a great vibe. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you've been around the world. You've done, you've trained. I mean, obviously, as Mike said, 20 years ago uh, uh, to do the, the comeback last year in New York. I mean, uh, you've obviously opened shop in Toronto. Have you ever thought about opening outside of Toronto? Like, why Toronto as, as a market? Uh, so, I... I, I have American citizenship too. Oh, so nice. I have friends that are just like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah. So I fantasize about moving to Florida. Where? Oh, Florida. Like really? not, yeah. not LA? Or LA. <laughs> it's just like, when I was uh, in my 20s, I actually thought I, I, I had I'd gone on vacation for the first time in oh, like forever in my 20s. I went to Cancun. Mm-hmm. and with buddies and you go to Mexico the Yucatan Peninsula and the sky is just spectacular and you mm-hmm. came back and it was a bad winter and you came, I came back and it was the end of February here and you couldn't see the sun mm-hmm. and I remember thinking to myself what am I doing here people live like that all year round I know I and I know. have American citizens I'm like maybe I should do it now and I remember researching the best place to open like for business lifestyle like I had all these spreadsheets and charts right. and like Excel right. sheets of like where I should go 
and I actually moved. I not moved. I I went to California to check it out because Orange County. All roads led to Orange, Orange County. Orange County. Yeah, wow. and I went, and I was like, it had it had rained for the entire time I, I was there. like the same. most Lagoon, it had rained Laguna in seventy. Yeah, 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 all, yeah. That whole location. Yeah. So I didn't do it then. I won't do it now. It rains. Well, you took, yeah. you took it as a sign. And then it? and then and like maybe it's a good thing. Like Mendez Brothers opened up shop over there. And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. how you can yeah, you well, compete with Mendez Brothers for jujitsu. The luck. good thing is is that we do have actually two locations. So Joel, why yes. don't you tell all the listeners and the viewers where your two locations are, addresses, all hours. right? We got um, uh, the Vaughn location at Dufferin Langstaff, mm-hmm. uh, open seven days a week. And uh, the Toronto location, which is where I spend a little bit more of my time, is uh, at uh, on Les Mill, which okay. is York Mills and Leslie area, DVP and 401. Also, seven days a week, morning, lunchtime, evening classes. And, like, beginners are starting up every day. Nice. Bring your kids, bring your wife, bring yourself. So somebody right now is interested in, in joining uh, one of your gyms. RevMMA.com. RevMMA.com. Yeah. Let me ask you, just to... Th- it's New Year's. I mean, it's January, New Year's resolutions, all those things. I know it's kind of mid-January now. Dude, it's almost Valentine's Day. Almost. I have people still wishing a happy know. New Year. I think like, shoppers, they already, they, <laughs> shoppers Drug Mart, they probably already have yeah. you know, the Valentine's Day yes. decorations. Let me ask you, someone who's sitting at home, they know, they look in the mirror, they don't like what, what, who they are, what yes. they've become, that sedentary lifestyle. Yes. Whatever it is, like wherever they're at, um, I know that you've, you've helped probably thousands of people from this journey of a thought yes. to that point where it's like, wow, um, I've really accomplished a lot and I'm just getting started. That first step, what do they need to know for that first step? If you can get in their head and help them take the first step, what is it? A year from now, you wish you started today. Ooh, that's good. Yep. You have yeah. actually a quote. You say, uh, if you miss class because of the cold weather, you are weak. <laughs> weak. And natural selection is coming for you. <laughs> it's a mi- You know what it is? It's a mindset, right? Yeah. It's just a mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, I like because that people because you know what it is, and this is like uh, people always say, you know, um, why do you make people sign up for a year? I said, but that's because it's a commitment. And so, what does that mean? It means that during the year, there's going to be stuff that comes up. Right. There's going to be stuff that comes up. You're going to be redirected. There's going to be uh, mm-hmm. a party. It happens to me, or there's. I mean, not for me. I'm not a big partier, but like, right. there's going to be something, whether it's a flu or a family event or something that gets you distracted right, and veers you off course from training. But if you know you're committed to something for a year, I'm going to do this for a year, I can't get out of it for a year, yep. that holds you accountable. Yep. And it's going to make you achieve your goals in a way that letting you have an out, uh, whether it's, oh, it's minus 10 out, I'm going to stay home. Yeah. You're not going to achieve what you need to achieve and what you, need, what you want to do. Or if your mem- membership's month to month, and it's like, whatever. Easy in, easy out. Right? Easy in, easy out. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's like a school. A year from now, you would have wished you started today. Sure. I love Because people man. say, listen, they, you know, people come in all the time. They either sign up or they say, I want to think about it. And I look at them, I go, don't think too much. That's right. Exactly. Okay. It's an excuse. Excuse, yeah. right? That's good. Yeah. I think, you know what, it's the kind of thing that people, sometimes people need to be convinced of stuff. And in the end, they benefit from it. Mm-hmm. But it's our natural um, reflex to resist change and to resist what could be sometimes difficult work like mm-hmm. it's not going to be easy every day mm-hmm. but it's going to be worth it but i think you change through that process and you become Ta- a different person taking that same advice for yourself you know being vulnerable honest what would you throw out there for yourself what is the challenge for you that makes you nervous you know moving forward for where you are that really makes you nervous that you think okay that's not possible or oh man i mean i think you accomplished it last year coming back out of retirement i mean it might have nothing to do with the mma world I'm just curious for you, you know, what what is it that you're going to stand up and, and take on next or that you're even entertaining the thought of doing? Mm. Well, now you put me on the spot. Yeah. It's really early in the morning for... I know. For, <laughs> so, and you didn't see the snow was flying literally sideways. Just like It was horizontal. Did you see that? I did. It looked like a... It wasn't this a special mo- effect. This is your moment, Joel. So let's, let's, re- let's recap what you want me to do. Hold on. Just yeah. recap because that was a big question. What makes you nervous? You know, what makes you nervous where you're like, okay, this is the next thing. This is the arena I don't know. This is, and it might have nothing to do with what your reputation I, is and I what think, you know for. I think uh, helping out uh, younger gym owners uh, achieve success. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because like anything, there's no template for this. Yeah. You know, there's what I do. It might not be what you need to do. Right. 
there's what I've heard other people do. There's different things. There's different experiences that I have. But um, it's kind of like someone else trusting you with their business now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And like, so, okay, that's amazing to let you speak into that and pour yeah. your wisdom. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Ooh, that's good. We should open a gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sound good? Yeah, just okay. not down the street from me. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Joel, look, man, uh, we really want to thank you. For, thank you, guys. For coming down here today. I mean, we learned a lot, um, I mean, uh, for all those children, for all those children that are being bullied. We did it for the children. We did it for the children. Yeah. Teach uh, them the well and let them lead the way. That's, that's right. I'm thinking. In, in a couple of weeks. We I know, yeah, I just quoted Whitney Houston on your podcast. <laughs> I know, exactly. We, we have a guy, Anthony McLean. He's a anti-bully. He speaks in schools. He's kind of spoken all over the world. Really cool guy. Yeah. A uh, good friend of ours. And he's going to be coming in. This is what this is his thing. I, I have an idea to maybe... Uh, Fuse something together. Yeah, something. I'm something. down. And it's just, yeah. So would yeah. you be uh, down yeah. to actually? An, a, would you be down to an on-location shoot one day at your gym? Of course. I mean, it's, it's always spotless. It's always ready for set because we on. know you're coming. We're like, oh man, there's squeegee. a movie. There's a yeah. movie coming out right now by 20th Century Fox. What's it called? The Night and the Something. I, I'm not even good at uh, what the title is, but it's in the theaters coming out, okay. and it's all about bullying. It's a. It's a. It's really? A, so they reached out to him and said, "Hey man, would you mind doing something since you're all about the bullying Sick. thing?" Sick. But. I'm down for that too, man. I think it'd yeah, be amazing. Be cool. Yeah, it'd be sure. amazing. Let's take a stand for that, cause uh, you know. Yeah, let's maybe we'll pick a pipsqueak and a yeah. and a bully. Yeah. And put them together. Yeah, that's right. Train. I like go. it. You know yeah. what I mean? We'll, yeah. Let's we'll shake it up somehow. Amazing. Okay. Cool. It's good. Cool. Thanks, guys. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate it, man. Awesome. Take yeah, care. Sounds good. And we love pipsqueaks. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Make sure to drop by next week. Let's go. go, 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 go. And don't forget to subscribe. Let's go. It's time to give a shout out to our sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Sentinel Security Plus. For all your premium security needs, visit SentinelSecurityPlus.com. We got some questions for you. What do you stand for? Hey, Constantine, it's Mike. Hey, what's cooking, good looking? I know the perfect guest for next week, Joey Salmingo. Oh, that's the TV host who's done everything from the shopping channel to working the red carpet at the Oscars, man. Did you know he's dropped everything in honor of his sister?